<clears throat> Good afternoon. My name is Preet Bharara, and I'm the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Uh, we are here today, again, to announce public corruption charges, this time at some of the highest and most sensitive levels of the New York City Police Department. The alleged conduct violates the basic principle that public servants are to serve the public, not help themselves to cash and benefits just for doing their job. Today we allege two separate and serious criminal schemes involving the bribery of officers who were sworn to uphold the rule of law. In one, private citizens, we allege, spent well over $100,000 for all manner of official police actions, and in the other, Offices subverted public safety by putting hard-to-get gun licenses essentially up for sale. In all, we have charged four senior NYPD officers. One has already pled guilty. The other defendants are innocent until proven guilty, but we intend to prove every allegation in federal court just as soon as we get the opportunity. <clears throat> now, let me describe the alleged bribery schemes at a little bit more length. <clears throat> the first described in a detailed complaint, involves the alleged corruption of two commanding officers. Uh, they are Michael Harrington, the former executive officer of the chief of department's office, which supervises all uniformed police uh, officers in the NYPD. And the other is Deputy Inspector James Grant, the former commanding officer of the 19th Precinct on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Over a period of years, these two police officers allegedly engaged in an egregious quid pro quo relationship with two private citizens. Jeremy Reichberg, a Brooklyn man who held himself out as a NYPD liaison, and a real estate businessman who was a friend of Reichberg, now cooperating with the government. <clears throat> as we allege, they spent well over $100,000 in bribe money to get what they wanted. Now, what did Reichberg and the cooperating witness get in return for their bribes? They got, in effect, a private police force for themselves and their friends. Effectively, they got cops on call. When they needed to get somewhere quick, <clears throat> they called on Grant and Harrington for a police escort, and they got it. Lights, sirens, and all. When they wanted to go to a parade or other important event in the city, they got VIP access, courtesy of Grant and Harrington. When Reichberg's jewelry business had problems with customers and com uh, competitors, he asked for and got help from Harring to help settle those disputes. When they, got, uh, when they or their friends got pulled over for traffic problems, they were able to get out of trouble, including a friend of Reichberg who, according to an officer at the precinct, was, quote, driving like a lunatic, close quote, into traffic and running red lights. As the complaint describes, and you should read this, it's at page 14 of the complaint, this friend appears to have gotten away with this dangerous driving without any consequence at all in real time as he was being stopped by an officer. And as we also allege, they even got help obtaining gun licenses from the NYPD with Reichberg able to use Grant and his connections at the gun licensing division to get a full carry license within days despite a process that normally takes months. As described, Reichberg and the cooperating witness showered officers Harrington and Grant with bribes in exchange for all these official actions. <clears throat> if you take a look at the, the chart to my right, I've already talked a little bit about what the official police action uh, was uh, on, on, that was done by Michael Harrington and James Grant uh, at the behest of Jeremy Reichberg and the cooperating witness one. And what are some of the things that we allege in the complaint uh, that were paid uh, in exchange for those official, official actions, among other things, hotels in Rome for Grant, in Chicago for Harrington, a Super Bowl trip to Las Vegas on a private jet for Grant, over $75,000 in private security business for Harrington, and some $12,000 in home contract work for Grant, not, not to mention expensive dinners, sporting event tickets. <clears throat> There's even an allegation of, uh, of toys for one of the officer's children. So it went on and on and on as detailed at some length in the complaint. Um, by the way, <clears throat> as also alleged, Officer Grant got so used to these lavish gifts that when they didn't come quickly enough or often enough, he was not shy about making demands. On January, uh, to, in January 2015, 
as we allege in the complaint, there was a call with Reichberg, recorded pursuant to a court-authorized wiretap, two years after the Super Bowl trip to Las Vegas, and Grant is complaining that he hadn't been invited that year, quote, you didn't invite me to the Super Bowl, what the F? Grant also complained that his two L's, referring to Reichberg and the cooperating witness, had not come by with gifts that Christmas as they had done in prior years. For their roles in bribing officers Harrington and Grant, Reichberg was also charged and arrested this morning. His friend, the real estate businessman, has pled guilty and is cooperating with the government. Now, I mentioned that one of the benefits Reichberg and the cooperating witness got was helping get gun licenses. That brings me to the second alleged criminal scheme, one that corrupted a function at the heart of what law enforcement does, and that is keeping our citizens safe. You can see at the chart to my, to my far right <clears throat> a depiction of some of the conduct alleged in that indictment. But let me go through it for a moment in some detail. <clears throat> David Villanueva, an NYPD sergeant and a supervisor in the licensing division, we allege, took bribes for years from Alex Lichtenstein, a so-called expediter, in exchange for pushing through gun license applications. Lichtenstein charged clients who wanted gun licenses upwards of $18,000, and he in turn gave Villanueva thousands of dollars. Villanueva himself gave some of that bribe money, we allege, to police officer Richard Ochital, who worked under Sergeant Villanueva in the licensing division. In addition to cash, Lichtenstein allegedly also gave Villanueva and Ochital bottles of liquor and limousine rides. And in exchange, Villanueva and Ochital allegedly pushed Lichtenstein's applications through without doing all the necessary checks or getting all the information they needed to properly approve gun license applications. And what was the result of this alleged corruption? Not surprisingly, gun licenses were issued to people who had no business having them. The over 100 Lichtenstein clients who ultimately got gun licenses allegedly included, and this is in the indictment, one person who had previously been arrested for bribing a public official and for assault, and another who had been arrested for forgery, had 10 moving violations and three vehicle-related summonses, and had been the subject of at least four domestic violence complaints, including one in which he allegedly threatened to kill someone. <clears throat> now, since our investigation began, the NYPD has taken steps to revoke the licenses for those who should not have gotten them. But during the allegedly corrupt scheme, the gun licensing process meant to safeguard the public was, of course, dangerously compromised. Lichtenstein, as you may know, was previously charged in a complaint and arrested on April 18th. Sergeant Villanueva <clears throat> is now charged in an indictment with Lichtenstein and was arrested this morning. <clears throat> Officer Ochital has pled guilty to his crimes and is now cooperating with the government. Uh, as you might imagine, uh, to successfully investigate a case like this, cases like these, we need strong partners, and we have very strong partners indeed at the FBI and the NYPD. I want to thank the FBI, represented here, uh, by Diego Rodriguez, the assistant director in charge of the New York field office, uh, who has been an important partner in this case and so many other cases, as you know. Specifically, I want to thank and acknowledge Supervisory Special Agent Jared Whitmire and Special Agents Joseph Downs, Bart Hubbard, uh, Michael Buscemi, Blair Tolman, Jennifer Renucci, and Jason Alberts. I also want to thank, of course, the NYPD, <clears throat> represented here today by Commissioner William Bratton, for their work on this and other related corruption cases. I specifically want to thank and acknowledge Deputy Commissioner Joe Resnick, Lieutenant Brian Sparber, and Sergeant Mark Klausner, all of the Internal Affairs Bureau. And finally, I want to thank uh, the investigators and career prosecutors in my own office who have worked on this case, Assistant U.S. Attorneys Martin Bell, Russell Capone, and Khan Nawade, supervised by their uh, chief, Andrew Goldstein, of the Public Corruption Unit. Standing here just two weeks ago, announcing another public corruption case, I said that we will be as aggressive as ever in exposing corruption wherever we find it. And I said that it was too bad we seem to find it everywhere we look. And unfortunately, that now includes within the NYPD. When corruption subverts public safety, that is especially tough to take. It can tear at the very fabric of society. It makes people wonder whether those entrusted to protect and serve them are in fact doing that. That is why cases like this are so important, and that is why we pursue and prosecute public corruption vigorously wherever we find it. Now, 
Let me end by saying that days like today are not pleasant or easy for people in the business of law enforcement. It is not pleasant to investigate, arrest, prosecute, and punish your fellows in law enforcement who took the same oath that you did. And it is not easy to see police officers bring dishonor to an institution deserving of the greatest honor. It is a heartbreaking thing, but it is our duty to enforce uh, the law and to uphold the rule of law, and to do so perhaps most unflinchingly when we come across people who have chosen to breach that sacred duty, because an officer who betrays his badge betrays every honorable officer, as well as every member of the public. The NYPD is, in my view, the finest police force in the world, and has done more to protect our city and keep us safe than any comparable force in any city anywhere. And I am especially proud to work with the police department and with a commissioner that has the courage to police itself, as it has shown today, which is a lot more than I can say for some other institutions. Now I'd like to bring to the podium my friend and partner, Diego Rodriguez. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. At the FBI, we have no higher criminal priority than public corruption. This case, U.S. Attorney Barrara just detailed for you, shows you just how dangerous the abuse of power can be. Public servants should be above reproach and none more so than those law enforcement officers who swear an oath to protect and serve. As alleged in the indictment, David Villanueva set aside that duty for nothing more than his own financial gain. In some instances, his alleged dereliction of duty in conjunction with so-called expediters like Alex Lichtenstein, enabled the worst among us, including convicted felons and individuals with domestic violent complaints to obtain gun permits, giving them unfettered access to firearms. This kind of corruption puts the lives of all New Yorkers in danger. The alleged pay for play schemes involving Jeremy Reichberg and officers James Grant and Michael Harrington involved Reichberg allegedly providing Grant and Harrington with lavish gifts in exchange for services and favors. Reichberg didn't allegedly provide these gifts just to get his friends out of, out of tickets, as alleged in the complaint. He was grooming Grant and Harrington to be his pawns, attempting to ensure his ability to exert undue influence over high-ranking uh, uh, officials in the NYPD for officers and to the officers to come. And Grant and Harrington allegedly went along with it, again, for nothing more than financial and personal gain. Those abuses of power are not victimless crimes. The victims are the citizens of New York who rely on their public servants to fulfill their sworn duty. The victims are the upstanding police officers who do everything in their power to uphold the law and protect the public. The victims are the public trust and confidence in law enforcement, both critical to ensuring public safety. The FBI, along with our partners, will continue to root out this kind of decay in every level in order to protect our citizens from the devastating consequences of corruption that undermines safety and erodes the trust between law enforcement and the public. I'd like to thank, as always, our partners, including U.S. Attorney Preet Bharara and Assistant U.S. Attorneys Martin Bell, Russell Cabone, and Khan Nuade, Commissioner Bratton, and the NYPD Internal Affairs Bureau. I would also like to thank and congratulate the FBI's public corruption investigative team for their dedication and the hard work they put in bringing this case to its conclusion. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thanks, Diego. Now, uh, let's hear from Commissioner Brown. Thank you. I'd like to acknowledge the U.S. Attorney, head of the FBI, and thank them for their close collaboration and leadership during the course of this investigation over the last several years. I think I can safely say it's probably been unparalleled in the sense of collaboration and cooperation in this very important matter. These are never good days, never easy days, as the U.S. Attorney referenced. But what I see here is that the system works, the system where we seek to proactively go where the truth takes us, no matter what the consequence. This case began with a call to IAB three and a half years ago, in the pre-dawn hours, it kicked off a case. When that investigation crossed uh, with an FBI case, the investigations merged. When two police officers came forward on the same day, separately, 
with allegations of corruption about this case, those complaints were quickly turned into investigative action. What we are not seeing here is a malaise where corruption is ignored or slow rolled or passively covered up. We see an aggressive system that worked here, U.S. Attorney's Office, FBI, and at the NYPD. At the NYPD, I'd like to single out for acknowledgement, certainly uh, Deputy Commissioner Joe Resnick, his deputy chief that uh, heads up uh, uh, Group 25, the group that investigated this case and were embedded with the FBI, several members that the U.S. Attorney has already referenced, uh, Chief uh, Brian O'Neill, and certainly uh, we benefited extensively with the involvement of my Deputy Commissioner for Legal Matters, Larry Byrne, who for many years worked in the Southern District as a prosecutor. So I think that combination of players on my side helped to move this case forward in the seamless way that I've described. What I would emphasize, what this case is not, is the systemic corruption of the Knapp Commission of the 1970s, or even of the Marlin Commission of the 1990s, which I had certain familiarity with as police commissioner during portions of that time. What this is, is a number of people, some high ranking, who gave favors, and as was alleged in the complaints that the U.S. Attorney referenced, and who received things of high value in return. Police officers, especially high-ranking members of the department, have to know better, need to know better, and have to set the example for others and have to follow the law. As alleged in these complaints, that was not done. This case shows whether you're a cop or a chief, if you break the law, you will be handled the same way. As a result of today's charges, criminal charges, Deputy Chief Harrington, Deputy Inspector Grant, and Sergeant Villanueva are being suspended. Chief Harrington and Inspector Grant have previously filed notices of retirement, which are effective this week. Although the department cannot prevent their retirement, they will do so under suspension and therefore not in good standing. Officer Ochital is currently uh, cooperating, as uh, the U.S. Attorney has referenced. He is on uh, modified assignment from the department at this particular time. In closing, again, I thank the U.S. Attorney for his leadership in this issue, and I thank the, US, the FBI for their willingness to work closely with us that uh, I think this shows the best of all three of our organizations, what we can accomplish when we work together. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Happy to take your questions. I'm not going to comment on anything that's beyond the case. I'm sorry, the, the last part of your question? Uh, his chief of department at the time, I believe, was... Okay. I can't speak to anything uh, as it relates to uh, former chief of department, uh, Philip Banks. Okay. Yeah. Effectively, his retirement benefits, which are separate from the department, uh, will be intact. What he does not get from the department would be the uh, permission to carry a firearm, the good guy letter, which is a letter that indicates that he retired in good standing, which would be helpful in future employment uh, opportunities that he might seek. So effectively, he is uh, retiring under criminal indictment, which are allegations at this time. But uh, as far as the department is concerned, that he is uh, leaving the department not in good standing, both and he and Inspector Grant. I may have missed it, but what about uh, Mr. James Grant? What's his position? His status is the same. In other words, he has already filed for retirement. He will be retiring, I think, as of tomorrow. Similarly, he will not receive the, uh, the so-called good uh, guy letter and will not be retiring in good standing with the department.
know the department that is dependent on who you know and who you can pay uh, to get access to your services? <clears throat> well, a good place to start is by arresting the people who we arrested and by showing not only that uh, it's important to hold people accountable criminally, every individual, no matter how high ranking you are within the department, you're not above the law. But also, I think it's important for the police commissioner himself to be here and the head of IAB to be here to all, with, the, with the FBI to stand up here jointly and say, as we've been saying for a long time, that corruption cannot stand and no one is beyond and above the law. And over time, you hope if swift action is taken and decisive action is taken, in case after case, administratively, criminally, civilly, whatever tools are available to you, that people understand um, that that kind of favoritism will not be tolerated, whether uh, it's at the NYPD or any other institution. Mr. Chief, um, could you comment on why you think it is so important for your confidential witness number one and for Mr. Weisberg to have that relationship with high-ranking members of the NYPD? And secondly, their response after the going that Chief Warren and uh, Mr. Harrington would be using the Chief of Department's office? I'm not going to comment on the second. I think that in the multiple, uh, you know, many pages of the, uh, the charging documents that have been unsealed today, it's clear that what they wanted for the, uh, the money they were spending and the gifts that were lavished and the trips that were uh, lavished on these officers was the ability to do all those things, the official police action, escorts, access to events, um, the ability to get out of traffic infractions for them and their friends. So as we allege in the complaint, we'll prove all this at trial, we expect. There were lots of benefits they got over time on an as-needed basis uh, in exchange for uh, all the gifts that were lavished on these officers. And also, they were big contributors to uh, Mayor de Blasio's campaign. Are you questioning them about that? Uh, there's, there's no allegation that has anything to do with the mayor uh, in these complaints, so I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, yeah. Expected, you I don't know whether you should expect more or not. Um, it's the case. Uh, with today's announcements, like it often is, that the case is ongoing and the investigation continues, uh, we have not closed the investigation today. Uh, we have been up to speed intimately with this uh, from the learning of it back in 2014 when I first became commissioner and continuing through the investigation, particularly as it began to accelerate and multiple investigations began to be joined together, that uh, there was a high degree of intimacy at all levels uh, through the U.S. Attorney's Office, down with the FBI, and within my organization with Internal Affairs, which had several of their people embedded with the FBI for the investigation. So everything that was done during the course of this investigation was done in furtherance of ensuring that we could, uh, to the best of our ability, get to the bottom of what was going on uh, with as complete an understanding as possible. And I think the uh, 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 charges that have been leveled today by the U.S. Attorney's Office are reflective of the scope of that investigation and the intimacy of it. Last question. I have a question. Can I ask, what's your message to other chiefs who say, in their course of business, they have to meet with community people, they have to go with dinners to them, and they're nervous now to do that sort of work, because if you go out to a dinner with someone, you could be looked at as corrupt. Well, there is an irony involved here in that we uh, strongly encourage, and it is essential, that at all levels of the department, civilian ranks, police ranks, high level, low level, uh, whether it's neighborhood coordinating officers on up to precinct commanders to bureau chiefs, borough chiefs, that we encourage that they develop relationships with their communities. But there are laws, criminal laws, there are conflict of interest uh, guidance uh, uh, is issues, there are department policies that need to be, they need to be cognizant of and need to adhere to. We have been making an effort over the last number of months since learning of the scope of this issue to educate our personnel relative to their duties and responsibilities, certainly as it relates to the law. That's fairly clear cut. Uh, the conflict of interest issues at Department of Administrative Policies, oftentimes a little more complex in some respects. 
We will be at the end of this month, uh, be having another one of the department's all-ins, as we call them, that you're all familiar with, where all captains and above will be coming in for a day-long session uh, where we will extensively discuss the issues of conflict of interest and department policy as to the do's and the don'ts so that there is no confusion if there is any at the current time. Uh, it's our obligation as a department to, if there are policy deficiencies that may have emerged as a result of this investigation, to ensure that those deficiencies are addressed. If there are ignorance or lack of understanding on the part of our personnel as to their responsibilities, that those will be addressed. And then also to the public, uh, to the public, reminding the public that uh, in certain instances, what we would need from them is their understanding. What we can do, what we can't do, when we can do it, why we can do it, or why we can't do it. So it is an issue that uh, uh, is going to require more work on our part, certainly, but as all things uh, coming out of these investigations, that you learn from them and then you move forward uh, with what you've learned from them. Thank you. Thank you.